Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today this is my second take on the New York Islanders season preview. I'll go over in a second why I have to redo this video but of course we'll get there. You guys probably have an idea of why uh, but the New York Islanders, listen, you know, I want to talk about how the Islanders added this player and that player and made this trade. They did make one trade, um, but nothing, really nothing from, from Lou Lamorello this summer. And you guys said in the comments when I posted the Kadri video, if you guys haven't watched that already, you know, Lou kind of punked everybody and this and that. You guys are awesome. I, I like seeing that stuff because it is kind of funny. Uh, but on, on a serious side of this, I mean, the Islanders, uh, you know, yes, they needed Alexander Romanov. They needed another top four D-man to play with Dobson. Great move by the Islanders. Defense wins championships. You got my full support on that. But the Islanders missed the playoffs last year. Last time I checked, right, this wasn't 2020 or 2021, right? I am in the right year. The Islanders missed the playoffs here in 2022. So the Islanders, to just make that one move wasn't going to be enough. And we knew that. The Islanders have struggled to score goals. That's been one of their biggest issues in the Lou Lamorello slash Barry Trotz regime for the past four seasons. And the Islanders have done nothing. So, here are the guys that the Islanders probably targeted, I would hope at the very least, targeted going into the summer this year. And let's see how things played out. These are all the misses that Lou Lamorello had this summer. So let's take a look at that. The first one, Philip Forsberg. He signed an extension in Nashville. Not much you could really do there, but that was a guy that was definitely on the Islanders' radar. I know I was licking my chops at the idea of him hitting free agency this year. He ended up staying in Nashville. Kevin Fiala, another former Nashville Predator. He was traded from the Minnesota Wild to the Los Angeles Kings. A price tag the Islanders definitely could have offered as well if not given a better offer so kind of interesting to see that how that kind of played out I don't get why Lou didn't jump on that one so Kevin Fiala a member of the Kings and he signed an extension he did sign a big extension though and, and again this is what I have to get to also Kevin Fiala yes the Islanders missed out on him but he's getting paid a lot of money for really what he provides. So that is another thing to consider here. And I know you guys will mention that, oh, well, Fiala's getting a lot of money with that trade. Absolutely. That is a very true point. So that is something to consider as well. As bad as it is that Lou didn't get this guy, he did come at a very heavy price tag after that. But if you were going to give seven and a half or seven million to Kadri, so what happened there, right? So that was Kevin Fiala. Johnny G, Johnny Goudreau. Again, same argument can be made. He made a lot of money going to Columbus. Okay, fine. That's another guy that the Islanders could have gotten though, right? Again, some question his ability in the playoffs and how good of a player he actually is. He was one of the, the best players in Calgary Flames history. So whatever argument you want to make, he was still a very good hockey player and he can score goals. So another miss for the Islanders. Most recently, and the reason I had to redo this video, Nazem Kadri signed in Calgary. Now, there was a lot of reports that he was signing with the Islanders, and I kind of find out, I'm like, oh, he signed, oh, okay. And, oh, he's not with the Islanders. He signed in Calgary. Okay. And I was kind of having a sigh of relief with that as well because... I didn't really like that contract. Seven over seven, and for a guy in his early 30s? No, 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 no. I don't want that, right? We've got enough of those guys. But again, it's the fact that he didn't do anything. Let's continue. Alex DeBrinkett, which this one hurts. This is one that I think the Islanders should have been very aggressive on. Alex DeBrinkett, he was traded to the Ottawa Senators. And I think, again, you can make the argument that he didn't sign an extension in Ottawa right away. It wasn't a sign-in trade. So there's no guarantee that with all the assets Ottawa traded for him, that he would even sign a long-term deal. Again, Lou could have been thinking the same thing. Yeah, we'll make the trade, but we need that security after. We need that long-term extension right as that, you know, we want the guarantee that you're going to sign. And maybe there was none of that. This one's kind of a weird one, but Nino Niederreiter, he ended up signing with the Nashville Predators. Again, a former Islanders draft pick, so maybe that's why he just doesn't want to go back to the Islanders. He's had his kind of affair with them, and it's kind of like, all right, I've, I've kind of 
been over that bridge. That's an X I don't want anything to do with. So I'm just going to go somewhere else. And I mean, it's Nashville, so I can't really blame him for that either. But again, another scoring guy that is cheaper than the Islanders could have gotten. Andre Burakovsky, he was putting pucks through the net for the Colorado Avalanche last season, literally in the playoffs. He ends up going to the Seattle Kraken on a fair contract. Again, one the Islanders probably could have given something similar to. Another lost piece there. I really liked Burakovsky. I think that's a, a real miss for the Islanders. And then Oliver Bjorkstrand, who I think is now one of the more underrated players in the league. And he got traded for basically peanuts and pucks um, from the Columbus Blue Jackets. And again, another guy that headed for Seattle. So the Islanders have missed out on all these guys just this summer. And you guys know I made that video earlier this summer talking about how the Islanders had missed out on guys like Panarin, Duchesne, okay, whatever, right? But the, the problem is not that the Islanders didn't get one of those particular players. I'd be fine if the Islanders didn't get any of those players. If Lou had made a trade for somebody else. But the problem I have is Lou didn't get any of those guys. Yes, there's a downstream effect to getting all of those guys. But it's the fact that you didn't do anything. And I'm kind of a broken record here because I want to talk about the Islanders, but there's nothing really to talk about because the Islanders haven't done anything. They have not signed one guy yet, according to the contract situation. Now, again, you guys will say Lou has an under-the-deal long-term extension, apparently, for Dobson, and I'm sure they have something for Romanov. He wouldn't be wearing the Islanders' practice jersey if he didn't have some kind of deal in the works. So expect those two to get the long-term, at the very least, Dobson to get a long-term extension. I'm expecting maybe an eight-year deal, $6 million per season, maybe more than that. Um, so that's one to look at. But it's not that I'm disappointed that the Islanders didn't get one of those guys, a Goudreau or a Kadri, or even a Dabrinkit or a Burakovsky, who I think those were the ones I really, really liked. It's the fact that you didn't do anything. Now, here's the thing. Is the mindset that Oliver Wallstrom and Matt Barzell are going to be kind of freewheeling it next season under new head coach Lane Lambert? Is that the expectation? Because if that's the expectation, okay, but that roster wasn't a playoff roster last year. What guy is going to come out of the woodwork and just completely fix the Islanders' woes and scoring woes for not even the Lou Lamorello, Barry Trotz era? Before that, I could argue part of the reason Tavares left is because he never had a good scoring player with him. This has been a problem for the Islanders for an extremely long time. Since they drafted Nino Niederreiter a decade ago, the Islanders have had this problem. And there's been rumors that maybe a Jen Gabriel Pajot trade is on the way, or potentially even an Oliver Wallstrom trade, which sickens me to my stomach but I've also heard Anthony Beauvillier's name out there Matt Barzell's name I made a video about that last week we're hearing all this loony stuff but that would mean that Lou has to have another deal on the table coming in right and I just think that it's one of those things where what do you really do right even JT Miller JT Miller I'm kind of like you know, you know, wiping off some sweat because I'm kind of happy they haven't gotten Miller yet because similar to Kadri, yeah, he had a great season last year, but this is a guy that doesn't typically get 100 plus point seasons every year and he's asking to get paid like that after one good season. So the Islanders, I understand where the difficulty is here for Lou, but this is his job. You know, I, it's easy for me to sit here on the sideline and say, why haven't you made a move, this and that. I understand. You can make an argument for all of these trades, why you shouldn't do any of them. But you know what? All these teams still made these moves because there has to be some sort of positive return on that, that risk, right? Every deal you sign is a risk. And they posted a stat the other day that was interesting. So four years of Lou Lamorello with the Islanders. He has had two long-term a long-term contract signed in that time. You want to know who they are? Leo Komarov. 
a five-year deal, $3.5 million per season. He hasn't, you know, we're two years, two or three years into that deal, and he's gone already. That contract is void. And the other one is Semyon Varlamov, who got a five over five. And I was not a fan of that at the time. He had some injury issues at the end of his career in Colorado, but he's actually turned out to be pretty good. And you could argue he probably gave a pitch for Ilya Sorokin to come in. So in those two things alone, you know, the Islanders did pretty well with that one. But that's what I'm talking about. It just seems like Lou Lamorello is just so risk averse with this team. He's so afraid to sign someone or trade for someone. And if that's the mentality, it's never going to work. And if you try and go with this sort of, you know, um, you know, creating the leverage like, oh, well, if we're not, if you don't do this, this and this, we're out. And teams are like, okay, there's a better offer there, so I'm out. You know, and then the leverage thing kind of just dissipates. So I understand what Lou's doing. It's just you have to do something. And I'm not saying to make a trade just to make a trade. That's not the case. But when you are Lou Lamorello, a GM of the year during your time with the Islanders, and let's be honest, when he won GM of the year with the Islanders, what was the only move that he actually made? All of that was inherited from Garth Snow. The only move that he did was signing Lou Lamar- uh, uh, Leo Komarov to that contract, paying $3.5 million to a bottom six grinder in Toronto. And again, nothing against Leo Komarov. Loved him as a player. But let's be honest, you know, the reality is that's what he was. So... He's known for being a guy that overpays in contracts and also being very frugal with the younger guys. So that leads me to the final point today, which is, you know, this has been a sort of a season preview video, but it's turned into something else. Do I think the Islanders can make the playoffs? Yes. But would I be surprised if they missed the playoffs in 2023? No. Today, if I had a gun to my head, i say the Islanders make the playoffs. But I'm not confident in that. You have a division that the middle pack has kind of opened up a little bit. I think there's the top two teams, the Rangers and Carolina. And even that isn't even as sold as we may think it is. But let's just go with that. Looking at depth charts, they probably have the most superior. The Rangers and um, the Hurricanes. I know, that sucks to say as an Outer fan. But then there's the Mediator teams. There's the, the Penguins, Capitals, Blue Jackets. And Islanders. Let's just say those four teams. And if you want to make things more difficult, you could throw in the Devils. And you could even say the Flyers. Because the Flyers are expecting coming into this season to make the playoffs. So you have six teams in the Metropolitan Division. Out of the eight teams, there's only four playoff spots. Maybe five in your division at best. Depending on what happens in the Atlantic. Which is being reckoned as the best division in the NHL next season. So I have the Islanders making the playoffs to kind of go with the season preview series here, but I'm not looking, I'm not feeling great about this season. There are too many things that the Islanders still need to address. The power play, they have a new coach there. Um, They brought in the the old Devils um, announcer. He was a Sharks coach for a while. Uh, John McClain, I think that's a nice addition. But again, these are all things we, we kind of have to see how things work out early in the season. And we really don't know what's going to happen until we see the product on the ice. So it's kind of my cop out saying that, you know, my thoughts here. But I do think the Islanders make the playoffs. But I am wary about if they make the playoffs and if they do get in, are they a team that just folds in the first round because they just don't have the scoring ability? So let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.